Hello and welcome. Uh, this is the second video in Module 3, uh, the second lesson in Module 3, um, where we are looking at solving some quadratic equations um, that are word problems. So um, in the earlier video, the previous video, we solved this um, ramp question right here, and now we're going to um, continue on here to this next one with Lord Byron. So. Lord Byron is designing a set of square garden plots so some peasant families in his kingdom can grow vegetables. And that's important there, square garden plots. The minimum size for a plot recommended for vegetable gardening is at least two meters on each side. Okay, so at least two meters on each side. Okay, Lord Byron has enough space around the castle to make bigger plots. He decides that each side will be the minimum 12, two, oh, sorry, two meters plus an additional X meters. Okay, so square garden plots, minimum two meters, but we're going to add an additional x. So let's see here. So a square garden plot, okay, and we're going to, what expression can represent the area of one individual garden based on the undecided additional length x? So we know for sure that the dimensions will have a two, right, because they're at least going to be two meters on each side, but they're going to add an additional x to each dimension. So if I add an x here to keep this thing square, we'll also have to add x here, right? Because the square has all the sides are equal. So what would the area of this square be? Well, the area of the square is just like the area of a rectangle. It's length times width. And so in this case, it's going to be 2 plus x times 2 plus x. And or, since it's multiplying you know, the same thing by itself there, we can also just say 2 plus x quantity squared. All right. Next, letter B says there are 12 families in the kingdom who are interested in growing vegetables in the gardens. What equation can represent the total area A of the 12 gardens? So over here, this was the area of one garden. If we want to do 12 gardens, what should we do? A equals 12 times 2 plus x quantity squared. 12 of these gardens, so 12 times. Okay. Letter C says then, if the total area available for the gardens is 300 square meters, what are the dimensions of each garden? So that's our total area right there, which we would put in for the area right there, because again, this is total area for all the gardens, all 12 of those gardens. So we'll say 300 equals 12 times 2 plus x quantity squared. Now, we want to actually solve here, right? We want to find um, what are the dimensions for each garden going to be. That means we need to know what x is. To solve this, we have a couple options. In the last um, set of videos, in lesson one, okay, um, we used factoring. So in some sense, this is already factored, okay, um, but it's not equal to zero, right? So what we could do is like expand this out. You know, we could do okay, twelve times two plus x times two plus x, and that would be twelve times four plus four x plus x squared. And then it would distribute the 12, so it would be 48 plus 48x plus 12x squared. And then we would have the 300 over here equals 48 plus 48x plus x, 12x squared. We'd subtract the 300 over. And we get 0 equals um, negative 252 plus 48x plus 12x squared. And then you could try and factor that. You know, you would want to maybe look, factor out a GCF here and then, you know, look for numbers that, you know, you'd probably use the AC method or something like that here. Um, <clears throat> and that would be kind of tricky to do, right? Big numbers, um, kind of hard here. Um, so let's see here, I think. So the 252 would divide, so you could divide a 12 out here. And so you would have, um, I'm gonna rearrange the order, put this in, you know, um, standard here. Okay, Oops. and it would look something like this. Okay, and then you need to factor this and continue on. That's one option. Okay, and this would factor, it does factor, it would be like x um, plus 7 and x minus 3 in addition to the 12 out front there, and you guys can go from there. That's one option. However, because of the way this is written, we could also solve this a different way. Because we have this quantity being squared right here, um, we can actually isolate this quantity. That's the only x. This is the only x we have right now in our equation. So let's divide both sides by 12. Let me just show you this alternative way to solve here because of the way it's set up. Okay, 300 divided by 12 is 25. 
okay? And now what should we do to continue solving? Well, we want to get rid of this square, right? How do you get rid of a square? We square root, okay? And so we'll get two plus x equals, now don't forget the plus or minus five. I, yeah, I rearranged the order of things here. Let's flip those around, okay? So in other words, two plus x equals positive five or two plus x equals negative five. So subtract two from both sides in both equations, you'll get x is three and x is negative seven, which is what you would get right here as well using these factors too. Okay, now do both of these answers make sense in the context of the problem? No, which one doesn't make sense? The negative seven. Why does the negative, negative seven make sense? Well, it doesn't make sense to have a negative dimension, right? Now, we've got to be careful here. The dimension of the garden is not negative 7. The dimension of the garden is going to be 2 plus x. So it would really be negative 7 plus 2, which is still negative 5, and so that one's no good. So we'll throw that answer out. The other dimension there, 3, would be 3 plus 2, which is 5. And that one does make sense. So what are the dimensions of the garden? 5, by f five meters by 5 meters. Okay. Ah, and then here's that we just answered that question for letter D. So that's the C above there. All right. So we'll stop there and we'll get into some of these exercises here um, in the next video.